Good afternoon, good morning, good <laughs> evening, everyone. It is the Mikey Likes You podcast, a special bonus pod, uh, because I'm joined by my wife, Bianca Kylik, actor, mother, lover of all things. Um, she is joining me because last episode, I talked pretty heavily about the overwhelming, like aggressive misconceptions that women are fed when it comes to nutrition and training. And I figured that there was probably a lot of women out there who were listening to it and it it kind of wore a little bit on them to have some man mansplain stuff. Um, so why not bring on a female to actually give it to you from her mouth and her brain and her experience? Um, so my wife is joining me. She's an actor and has had a long career. And I mentioned that because, look, her body and her appearance is part of her livelihood. Mm -hmm. And she has for a long time, pardon me, two decades has uh, been engaging in fitness and, you know, eating to look a certain way and taking good care of herself. And she, too, bought into a lot of the things that women either believe automatically or are forced to believe by a lot of the farcical and uh, dishonest stuff that is put into the fitness media. Very recently, I would say in the last year or so, um, she threw caution to the wind and started really engaging in a lot of real progressive overload with complex resistance training, barbell movements and, and a heavy machine use and dumbbell movements, real, just old school barbell kind of, you know, what would be looked at as bodybuilding training and strength training, um, which was, I think, contrary to a lot of what she initially believed. She also has been upping her red meat intake, protein intake, and eschewing a lot of the old narrative of like, you got to eat a lot of vegetables and and plant-based salad, stuff, a lot of salad, yeah. and, and these kind of typically looked at as fitness foods. Um, and I can say this with 100% certainty from a completely objective standpoint that she has never looked and felt better. Um, so that that is kind of the basis for me bringing her on. And um, if you could just at the beginning kind of maybe give a little bit more detail to the stuff I was talking about, to the way you used to train, the way not only used to train, but the way you used to like dig your heels in about the things you used to do when it came to eating and training. Right. Well, um, I've, I have lifted weights mm -hmm. since before I met you. Sure. Sure. Um, but they were always in the context of lightweight, high rep, um, sometimes even just like body weights, you know, Tracy Anderson method, mm -hmm. if anyone's familiar with that or things that, um, where the selling point was that it was going to elongate you and lean you out, um, Pilates, yoga, a lot of that kind of stuff. And then like insane amounts of cardio. Right. And I hated cardio, mm -hmm. like with a fiery passion. And so on the one hand, I was spending a lot of time doing things I didn't love that I had to just you know drag myself to do and didn't do them consistently um and when i did i was not very happy about it um and then eating wise was always hungry and uh ate you know the typical like when i was dieting like when i was feeling like i needed to lean out or get in better shape for a role or whatever it may be pretty much consisted of one of two things. I'd usually start with a fast. So I do like a, <laughs> like a liquid, you know, seven day, um, detox. It's bullshit. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, feel great for the th first three or four days. Cause like, I probably stopped. Cause you were not eating Grubhub. Sugar yeah, or, yeah. yeah or whatever. Grubhub. <laughs> um, and then I, I don't, I just had like, like a whole internal joke that went on in my own head right there. Um, anyway. Do you want to share? Or? No, because no, oh, okay. it, it wasn't even really that funny, but I Good. entertained myself. Um, That's the difference between you and me. I recognize it's probably not even that funny, but I have to say it anyway. Yes, it's true. <laughs> um, and so then 
And then I would eat diet food. You know, I would do lots of salads with protein in them, but predominantly veggies. And I felt hungry all the time and I didn't enjoy that. But I told myself it was for the better good because I was getting in shape. And granted, you know, at that time it was probably in my 20s and 30s. So it was easier. Uh, or so I told myself, um, you know, that as I got older, it got harder because of aging mm-hmm. which i now know is a complete and utter lie well it's not a complete and utter lie i mean in the sense that well, it is. it's hard well no it's not it's genuinely harder to lose weight regardless of if good or bad i weight. i from a personal life lived experience standpoint tell you that that's bs because i think when you are doing the right things it is not this feels a thousand times easier and um, I think that as with most everything, it is a mindset and mm-hmm. it is what you tell yourself. And so I disagree. That's I, a, it's a, it's a, it's a gigantic part of it that I don't think anyone, whether it be a, a by the books kind of just binary scientist or someone who's trying to just go with the flow and feel it from their own experience, the, your, your outlook on it, your mind frame is a huge, huge component, but it, it's also, I think a bit dishonest to say like, um, in your personal experience, I, I believe it, it is easier now for you. You know, it's been it's been easier even in, at, at age. You'll be 45 in a couple weeks. No, in next week. No, next week. That's right. Um, it, I, I believe that. What I am saying, though, is that I do think it's dishonest to just try to create the narrative that there isn't a hormonal change as you age. There I, isn't a metabolic change. There, there, there is. But but I but, but I, I think I think it's very important for you to to state that. If you're making consistently making different decisions, it it doesn't necessarily feel as if it's but, becoming. But different. I think that that is also dishonest to argue with you to say in that direction because I truly believe mm-hmm. and I'm believing more and more every single day that everything is subject to the mental narrative we tell ourselves. And I think that if you tell yourself getting older makes things harder, it's going to be. And if you tell yourself that age is just a number and that the changes in your body really have very little to do with the power of your subconscious and your ability to change things through mental thought alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, As I, opposed to non-mental thought? <laughs> I'm tired. We ate so much bad <laughs> shit for your birthday yesterday. Yes. And I feel I feel mentally sluggish today. I hear you. Um I, I, I just think that it is, it can be, and I'm not saying that this part is easy because I think we are all, uh, you know, um, brainwashed, I guess, in a sense, but, but I think we are all uh, prey to the conditioning that we receive from the beginning of life. Uh-huh. And that I know that that's difficult to change the way that you've always thought or believed about things, but it can be done. And when you start to change those things, things that you thought were difficult are no longer difficult. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm, I, you've made a very important point and I'm glad you brought it up. Neither you or I, or anyone who's gonna be, like I said, maybe intellectually honest about it, can sit here and say like, well, it's really easy to change your mind and your, and, 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 just askew all these things that you believed either for your entire life or for a long period of time. It's really, really hard. It takes a, a it takes courage well, to kind of do and, that. And I think it's important for people to understand why it's hard. I know we're getting a little bit off topic here, but I think that this is- I, I don't think we are. I, I, yeah, I think it's an important component to yeah. what we're talking about, which is that there's two parts of your mind, right? There's your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. And your conscious mind is the daily- things that you choose to think and and it's your it's your it's who you are it's mm-hmm. it's the you that's talking and thinking inside your head your subconscious mind is essentially a tape recorder mm-hmm. and it just replays everything that has ever happened to you so all your past experiences anything anyone ever said that really stuck in the way your parents thought about things the way that your the people around you as you were a child thought about things you took those on and your subconscious mind just replays those over and over and over again and you can wake up and you can have all the 
the desire in the world to make it a great day and think all the good things you want to think. And then as you go into your day, your subconscious mind takes over and 90% of what you are thinking is the subconscious loop on repeat. Mm. So it really, what it requires is a, is presence and, and is, you know, all that like be here now and the power of now and all that stuff. But it's true because you've got to stay present with what's going on up here and watching what you're saying to yourself, because most of it is subconscious so that it's just on repeat and we don't even hear it anymore because it's been going on for so long. And so the hard part, what you're talking about, what is really the, the brave and the, and uh, the bravery and the courage is that you have to bring attention and that takes work because you're so used to going on autopilot on a daily basis. You're driving your car, you go on autopilot. You don't even realize that you've driven a large so swath of your drive. <laughs> the word swath. Swath. <laughs> um, but you got to bring it back. You got to practice bringing your attention back. What am I thinking about? What's going through my head? And that can be exhausting at first because we don't do that. That's not the way that we uh, live our lives for the most part. Yeah, it means presence, you know. Being it, it is present. And like really moment to moment, it's uh, it's very hard. It's, it's, it's fatiguing. Cha- it yeah. is challenging, but it's doable. And the thing is, is that at first, what's going to happen is you're going to find this dance between I'm present, I'm not present, I'm present, I'm not present. But the more you bring awareness to what you're thinking about and what's actually going on in your head, I'm going to tell you the shocking thing is that you start to realize how much negative, shitty stuff is going on in there. And you'll go like, oh, no wonder I can't achieve or or go after any of the things that I want to because I'm constantly telling myself how worthless and incapable I am. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're all lies. Yeah. It's all lies. Yeah. And um, I, yeah, all of that is uh, really well said. Really good good stuff. Thanks. No, 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 seriously. Like, <laughs> so it's a really well said and it's good stuff. And you kind of laid the groundwork for where you were at. And then maybe some yeah. of the, and you were never like bitchy about it, but there was that initial re- resistance because you had this, these foundational ideas. Okay. Because wait, 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 hold yeah, on. Okay. Uh, but you were initially resistant to, to me when I would say like, you know, like, Hey, let's order this ribeye. And you'd be like, okay, yeah, that sounds good. We got to get some greens though too. And I'd be like, no, we don't, but oh, we, yeah. we would get it. And so, so um, there was that initial re- resistance. And then finally over time, I would say what, like about a year ago, yeah, it was when I started working with Kaylee, the nutritionist, right. who was like, minerals, minerals, all the minerals were missing. And then she was like, bacon is excellent for you. And, and like, kale is not. And kale is not. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Funny, because that lines up with how, what my body thinks. Yeah. And here I was force feeding it. Um, lots of veggies. and And I think also just noticing that wow, when I eat certain vegetables, I feel really crappy the next morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not to be gross, but like the way stuff came out was indicative of, you know, how my food, how my body was digesting that. And Mm -hmm. it was telling me like "Mm, veggies, certain, especially certain vegetables, uh, me no likey. Well, and, and, and to, to, to simplify it a little bit, like, look at, I think the best, um, analogy you can make for human performance and the human body is automobiles. And um, for, for many reasons, um, there's a lot of like comparisons that you can make that actually are really, they're not just oversimplifications. They're very, very um, good and very reasonable. And food is the fuel that you put in your automobile, mm-hmm. right? And then I don't think it anyone's going to kind of disagree here the fuel that you put in your automobile and the fuel that you put in your body is is going to help fuel the engine or detract from its ability to do so depending on the quality the the poopy and the peepee is your exhaust coming out of your exhaust pipe if fuel is literally coming out of your exhaust pipe anyone would go 
well, this is, doesn't seem good. My engine isn't using this fuel. It's coming out of my exhaust well, pipe. Well, especially when it comes out undigested. Right. When you're I mean, no, literally, like, if, if you put in some gas and you drove 50 and you look and there's a trail of gas coming out of your exhaust <laughs> pipe, you'd be like, Jesus. Well, this <laughs> gas doesn't seem to be. And I, I, I challenge, if you eat a giant salad of, of leafy greens, you will poo lots of lettuce mm-hmm. and ca- like it will, you'll be, you're like, oh shit. If came right your body's me. literally like, nope. Yeah. Nope. Nope. I mean, how many people eat corn and mm-hmm. then see full kernels of corn the next morning? And, and um, I've never shit steak. <laughs> it's never, one, I've never, never shit have. a steak. Not one piece. <laughs> um, and, and again, I, I, I want to point out, I am not, uh, some anti-vegetable carnivore evangelist. But what I am saying is like, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater when you hear Paul Saladino or or these carnivore guys, the, you know, uh, Sean Baker, talk about the idea of carnivore stuff because with that, there's a lot of logic and a lot of reason, but people are so ingrained to believe certain things. And I'm also not anti-vegan or plant-based. What I am anti, and you don't necessarily see this coming from the opposite direction with like the carnivore folks, is that a lot of the science that is pushed to you that is promoting plant-based and vegan ideas is is not only not true, it's fucking crazy how scientists can even sleep at night with some of the bullshit that you go, and I am a dipshit. I have a very rudimentary hey, scientific. Hey, hey. Let's not again. Thoughts become okay. things. Thoughts together. But in the in the world of science, uh, I am not someone who's uh, extensively educated. I have a very rudimentary understanding of basic scientific principles, and I, be, beyond a shadow of a doubt, can take it to. A, 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 a PhD in biochem or a do, an MD, and I'll go like, well, how on earth can that, why would they even say this? And they all, 100% of the time, they'd be like, yeah, you're right. That's just ridiculous. How can they, I, the, the, the most crazy shit I've ever seen is how the China study has become scientific gospel. It is almost it it would be funny if it wasn't so sad how the China study has been looked at as something when I can read the China no, study and explain, go, oh, my God. Explain what the China study is. The China study is one of the most kind of referenced and looked at um, nutritional studies in the last you know, four or five decades. And there's four or five different facets to it. But overall, it tried to demonize the idea of animal products. And two of the basic fundamental uh, uh, premises of it was that, you know, dairy is bad and meat is bad. And here's how they based it. They took casein protein, which is a a constituent of milk protein. Okay, there's milk, there's casein and whey. That is the, the two kind of major components of the proteins in dairy. And they took casein protein and they gave it to not people with cancer, they gave it to active cancer cells. They just gave casein protein. In monkeys. In, in different various animals. And sometimes yeah. even in just isolated cancer cells and things. And the cancer cells, as all cellular bodies will do when you give it amino acids and protein, grew. And they're like, see, casein causes cancer. And you're like, well, wait a second, wait a second. Protein causes cells to grow. That's what it does. Hence the reason why a high protein diet is good because it helps all cells, not just muscle cells, but all cells in the body to to be anabolic. You just gave it to cancers. If I, if someone, if any doctor, any oncologist took a cancer having patient, you, the first thing you would say is like, you got to lay off the protein. Why? Not because protein's bad for you, but because protein will make the cancer grow as it will with any. That doesn't mean protein causes cancer. Uh, it's not even in the, like I said, a guy like me who practically failed out of high school would go, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. Another thing they did, and, and then that now that's been carried on in the, in the mainstream as casein causes cancer and weigh the same thing. They took 
local Chinese citizens from very uh, kind of underprivileged neighborhoods. These are people who are consistently not eating good diets, right? So they just separated like a, a handful of them and then gave them a plant-based diet within a controlled setting and compared them after a period of time with the regular people in these tribes who are eating fucking fried noodles with, right. with meat in it for, you know, six months. And they're like, look at the difference. They're and, so much healthier. And probably using some sort of seed oil to fry Of course, those. I mean, yeah. these are poor people yeah. in, in China. What are they? They're eating fried noodles in peanut oil with really low, with whatever meat they can get their hands on. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's actually quite sad that, you know, you people live that way. And, 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 I, and I feel deep sympathy. But I also feel deep sympathy for the people who then take that that insane distorted knowledge and then go, oh well, look, the China study says plants are better for you. Well, and, look at how much healthier they are. And I and I think too, you know, it, we've gotten really distanced and dis disconnected from just paying attention to our own bodies. Mm -hmm. And I think most of us, uh, I'm I'm not one of these anymore, but I definitely was like didn't trust my own feelings like mm -hmm. or the way my body f felt or looked or you know and now i can tell you pretty clearly like no that food doesn't make me feel good mm -hmm. and everybody's different and so if you're eating something and you feel really good and you have a lot of energy and um you know i think uh, uh, unfortunately gross but true like what's coming out in the toilet the next morning is a pretty big indicator and not just if there's solid bits of or particles of food in it but also like if it's really loose if it's runny um if you're constipated like those are all signs that the fuel that you're putting in is not agreeing with the dynamics of your physiology and um so i think it's really important and it shouldn't be a scary thing or a concerning thing or a stressful thing it should just be like hey my poop's telling me what I'm taking in is, isn't agreeing with mm -hmm. me. Or if you're really gassy, um, you know, I, I notice that since I eat this way, I have zero gas. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the way a healthy body operates. Um, so I, I just think it's important like to to take control of your your own body and your own diet and pay attention. It's the same thing as looking at your thoughts all day long. We're so disconnected from ourselves. We don't even look at like how, I mean, it's it, it, what I do sometimes is I, I take a notebook and I literally, because it's easy to forget. You get busy every day after your meal, just write down like, gosh, an hour after this meal, I got really tired. I felt like I wanted to go take a nap. Something you ate in that isn't, doesn't agree with you. That's, that's our take. Uh, and by the way, this is not medical advice. No, no, no. Well, it's not, Clearly. it wasn't going to be medical advice, but what it was going to, this is not. Because I know people get very touchy about this um, when it comes to parenting. Um, this is not like we do it right. This is how you should do it. This is not coming from a judgment standpoint. This is just our personal experience. But that is how we've had a lot of success with gearing our daughter to eat healthier. Is that not by looking at it like this food bad, this food good. But by constantly making reference to the facts like, hey, um, yesterday for my birthday. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, uh, <laughs> when, um, Why is <laughs> because every, when I said that everyone what, said was happy birthday, they were oh, God, internally yes. going, oh, happy, happy birthday, yeah, yeah, or yeah. they're not, they were like, fuck no, you. they're like, fuck off, dick. Um, we, we went and we had insanely delicious, yummy food that would not normally be on our, we had a lot of, uh, really like. Like just the, the com best, Mexican comfort food and literally the best donuts that were a dessert in and of themselves. Like these donuts were insane. Gordos. It was Gordos in in Austin, Austin. Texas. It was so good. But we had, and we also went to Weros uh, right there on Congress in like downtown Austin. We had just be like you know enchiladas, tamales, you know refried beans, like all this bullshit, right? And it was delicious, and we loved it, and it was celebration, and our positive mind frame getting back to it was like, hey, we're celebrating, and we want to eat this, and we're going to do it. And we did it. And all three of us, my daughter included, our, our daughter included, we're like, uh, uh, you know, as we were driving home, and we're like, hey, instead of going, see, that food's bad, 
your your lean sirloin's good. What we were like, how do you feel after eating that stuff? And of course, my daughter goes, eh, I feel like shit. You shouldn't say that, but you know what I'm saying. My wife and I, we recognize, we're like, hey, you know, if you notice, yeah, that stuff's great. Pizza and, and burritos are amazing, but you notice how different you feel when you have like some some salmon uh, avocado roll compared to when you have the uh, the the double double and fries. And she always is like, yeah, you know, so I feel sluggish and yucky and. But but also, mm-hmm. I think another important thing is that um, more and more when we eat those things is to is to really enjoy it because if you're going to make a choice to do it then at least for fuck's sake enjoy it yeah. because it's not worth it if you're going to eat it and shame yourself the whole time um we really we sat down mm-hmm. we ordered it was a it was an experience first of all we ordered like six of these donuts and and went the guy at the counter i was like had ordered the first two he looked at me and he goes um you know these are big these are big you know <laughs> and i was like oh yeah i mean it, we ordered enough for like 10 people, but we laid it out at the table. We took the pictures, did the, the Instagram. Pictures. We we <laughs> we really savored that. And the thing is, is that's as important because you're giving the message to your body that this is a celebration. This is joyful. Yeah. I'm not eating this to like, you know, uh, uh, flagellate myself. Like it's just something that's fun to do. And. And we went into it with that positive mind frame. Um, and I, 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 like I said, you shouldn't do something just because it's a certain day. If you don't want to eat that, like I, I feel that way about Thanksgiving. I'm not the, I think turkey's the shittiest form of animal protein ever. Turkey sucks my ass. After like a workout ass. Not even like when I fully cleaned and it like okay. shaved, you know, like when it's like a good thing. Turkey sucks. So when, when... Thanksgiving comes, I'm not going to force myself to eat for some sake because of some arbitrary date on a but, calendar. But again, this, this is this is all the conditioning. These yeah. are all the things that we've been told since we were little kids. Like you, you stuff yourself on Thanksgiving. And that doesn't mean that if you like doing that, continue to don't, you know, don't stop doing it if yeah. you really enjoy it. But let, but maybe just shift the mind frame to go like, why do I do that? Oh, I do that because it's literally what everyone has told me since I was a child. And this is how I've accepted this holiday to be. But then, like, if you're suffering for the next week, uh, maybe it's time to change your position on it a little bit. I had this conversation about alcohol uh, two two or three episodes ago. A a gentleman asked me a question regarding, you know, how feeling like crap after drinking and during day drinking and things like this. And I said the same thing. And I was all, I'm always very wary about alcohol and drugs because I am in recovery and I don't want to be that guy. It's like, they're bad. Don't do it. What I, what I did point out is that like normal people who don't have a problem with drugs and alcohol, they go out and they have a couple glasses of wine with dinner and they don't feel any shame. They're like, yeah, that was goddamn amazing. Yeah. And I loved that wine. It was a great wine. Or, you know, I worked really hard today. I'm going to come and I'm going to have a cocktail. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to sit home and I'm going to unbutton my tie or take off my blouse and put on some comfy clothes and I'm going to pour that whiskey and it's going to be great and I love it. And then they go about their evening. If you're taking, if you're doing something for the sake of enjoyment and it doesn't bring you any enjoyment after, there is a problem. Well, and I, I think what is really interesting to observe is watch the next time you eat something really gluttonous and and amazing. And, um, and what I notice is that after the first couple of bites it doesn't taste that good anymore. Like at that point, you're just kind of shoveling it in because you told yourself you were going to eat this thing. And I was so proud of us because it was a huge. It was a big step for us because we all three do this. And we and and last night we all stopped. I mean, we we all sampled all the donuts, and then we stopped. And Mike was like, "Should we get to go boxes to take these home?" And I was like, "No," because. We don't need to do that. No, and it's and, not going to be useful. And it's not going to be useful because <laughs> then we're going to eat it because it's here. And, you know, I think we didn't feel fantastic, but we also didn't feel horrible afterwards. I mean, I think everybody stopped. And I think just the gift that we're giving our child to have that mentality about food, because in my household, you know, uh, you were only allowed sugar on the weekends and mm. it was kept in this cupboard above the microwave and um, 
when my mom was like out of, you know, she'd go to run errands or whatever, we would pull, pull the stool over and get up there and just gorge on it. And so the conditioning for my brain was anytime I can get my hands on something sweet, I have to consume as much of it as I can because the ne- I don't know when the next time will be. Maybe next, you know, as a kid, the next weekend seems like freaking forever. Well, I know we didn't we all know that kid in, in college or in college age, if you didn't go to college, that grew up that way in high school around like drugs and partying and drinking the kid that like, you know, was was from a super religious household or something that was not even allowed to like be around partying. Yeah. And then they go to college and they become fucking like Gigi Allen in his prime, you know, right. and they're just like vomiting on themselves every night. Well, and I, and I think some of that too is like people who uh, weren't free to be themselves because yeah. alcohol, I, I know that happened for me, was like alcohol became this thing where it was like, Oh, I, I can do anything. And there's not that little voice in my head going, stop, stop. Don't do this. this is, you know, and I paid for it the next morning because then yeah. all the guilt came. Anyway, we're getting very off track. Well, I mean, it's important. Yes and no. I, I think there's a lot of factors that lead into, you know, that I, I don't think enough people talk about. It's not just a matter of calories in, calories out, lift amounts of sets and reps. There's so many emotional components that go into sustainable health. And I think a lot of these that we're talking about are, are very important components. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that you, at the very beginning of this, talked about these, con- the, the way that we're conditioned, whether it be things that we're, we hear all the time that we don't even realize are affecting us, and also what our parents and our, 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 our um, these um, figures of, of mentorship or, or, or uh, authority figures kind of ingrain in us. And I will say that one of the hugest assets and benefits and i thank my parents for this greatly because as you know i was raised like a feral child my parents didn't try to initiate anything into me they just were like right. are you alive uh okay good fine that was with food too and i i, I have a, a really effortless um judgment-free outlook on on religion and gay people and 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 sexuality i don't give a shit you know why because nothing was ever told. My parents never were like, this is right, this is wrong. They were kind of ignored me in, in a sense. And um, with food, the same way. It's like, I have, we're not going to sit here and say, like, eat this, don't eat that. And so by the time I got to be an adult, I just started being like, well, what makes me feel very good? And uh, what is this scientist saying is good? And what? It, and I never was like, oh, plants good, meat bad, vice versa. I just started to develop from a very kind of, fertile and open mind. Um, So circling back, a lot of people, most people, but women in particular, are not coming from that place because every fucking Cosmo magazine or Shape magazine and every website and every Instagram trainer is telling them, hey, eat your rice cakes with hummus and your your cucumber sticks and and, um, you're fucking starving all the time for the sake of wanting to get a body that you, you well, and, but I don't, and I don't think that we really think of it as like starving because you're just like, oh, this is what it feels like to, ha- you know, to for your body to tread, yeah. You know? And what I think the biggest like mind blowing moment for me was because we started out um, in the beginning when I switched over to to mostly carnivore. Mm-hmm. Um, was you were, you said like, just get in as much protein as you can a day. And I think you gave me like, try to get 200 grams Mm -hmm. of protein a day. And which is high for her. I would not say that that's something she needs to do forever, but I wanted to kind of set that mark to condition her to understand 200 grams of protein. That's 800 calories. Okay. She was fucking stuffed (laughs) trying to get that to get 800 calories. She was stuck. Now, of course, there's fat content and every, uh, everything around it that made it higher. But my point being is that you can go and have a meal. Now, I'm not even talking fast food. Just a regular old cafe or an Applebee's or something. M- more often than not, that meal is going to be way over 800 calories. And you don't sit there and go like, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm stuffed. Even if it's a fucking salad. Because that... that Four tables, the the seven tablespoons of the dressing they put on it yeah. is like five hundred calories. So I just wanted to get and and it and it worked for you. You started to recognize. You yeah. Know. So I mean, I I just I really noticed that you know um, I was like, wow, I'm not 
hungry and I would be like, I'd sit down and eat this huge, you know, salad, a big bowl of lettuce and it would be beautiful. But like literally an hour later, I would get, have that empty feeling in my tummy. And now it was like, I sat down and had a steak um, and I was satiated. I didn't even think about food until the next time it was time to eat. Mm -hmm. And, um, so you know, that was a, I was like, whoa, this feels, my body felt so good. It felt, um, really like I, I would feel very restless before and it felt very kind of calm and satiated. And there was just that really lovely feeling of, of being full. I mean, I was like, oh, this is, and you know, then on top of that, I think the, the, um, the, the aspect of actually working out, and yeah, I mean, my whole life I had been associated anybody lifting anything really heavy with these big, oh, you know, just buff, huge human beings. The whether, bulky, the the word bulky comes out of every female person, whether they were ever. male or female. It just was like the raw, you know. And um, everyone, every trainer I had ever worked out with had us doing like, you know, mindless like number of reps of low weight and. It was circuits. And, and circuits and it was boring. It just felt so boring and I didn't enjoy it. And I liked being with people. So like going to the gym and working with a trainer or working with friends was a fun opportunity to like connect. But um, the actual, none of it was stimulating on a mental level whatsoever in terms of the actual work itself, the, the working out. So Mike set me up with this girl, um, Janet Leah. Leia, Leia. Leia. Yeah. And, um, and that was another thing is I think seeing Mike and seeing how lean Mike would get lifting insane amounts of weight. And then also starting to be introduced to a lot of the women that he follows whose bodies are gorgeous and, and not something that I necessarily want to attain for myself because I think <laughs> as I, as an actor, want to be able to be versatile enough that I can, you know, if I'm so beefed up like that certain roles that doesn't work for but i you know i want to be at at the very least in a position where very quickly i could go in either direction if i mm -hmm. wanted to if i need to you know i go out for action stuff i want to be able to have like you know defined lines on my arms when i'm when i'm in that audition greatest on-screen physique i've ever seen female or male linda hamilton linda hamilton terminator 2 it's the greatest fucking achievement. I've you look there's you could cut her head off and just put and you'd be like, well, that person's badass. That person fucks shit up. I do yeah. not want to. And because it wasn't. And by the way, she was like 118 pounds in that movie. But, but even but even like that, sometimes a little too ripped. For no, me, of course. I know? mean, she I don't look. That body, Lin, Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor in Terminator 2 could not transition and do a romantic comedy. People would be like, what the fuck? No, why and, why is and this? I, and I think the, the people that we do see like that, like it is distracting because you're like, you want to, you know, as an actor, you want to embody a character, you know, as, as much as you can. And I think when there are elements that don't ring true for that character's life, that person wouldn't be that ripped. It, then it takes you out of it a little yeah. bit. So that's always my kind of approach with things. But anyway... Um, so we started, we started lifting and, and every week I was lifting more and, and keeping a journal and keeping a Writing, journal yeah. and right. And I'm mostly just marking like where I, you know, keeping the sets and the reps and the weight and what I did. And I'll never forget, like, I think it was like mm, two or three weeks in, I went to the gym and I started working out in a sports bra and just leggings. And I looked in the mirror and I was like, I cannot believe that's my body. And it was subtle. It wasn't anything that was, um, you know, so earth shattering that like uh, maybe I, I think other people would notice. But. Here's the thing. You had achieved that long, lengthy, ripped body that you were promised with fucking Pilates <laughs> And that had ball never, work. That had never happened. Right. Like elements of it sometimes, but it was very elusive. And like if, you know, I uh if I didn't, you know, do stick to my cardio for the like, you know, to the to the letter, um, then that would 
that would change it. And so it was very frustrating. And this was like, I couldn't believe it because I had experienced that fear for most of my life of like, if I do this, I'm going to be She-Ra. And, um, and the other thing that was so crazy about it was like, I mean, that really that moment of like seeing myself and going like, oh my God, and, and, and loving it and just, and just going, wow, this is my body yeah. and feeling really proud of it and noticing how like tank tops were just stuck to me and it looked so beautiful and lean. And, um, and then, uh, oh, I, I just lost my train of thought. There were, there was somewhere, uh, some other direction that I was going in was, oh, was, was putting on pants and like my butt was firmer and more lifted. And yet there was like huge space. Remember that came out in those pants. Mm -hmm. And I was like, these were so tight on me. On and your now waist. Yeah. I, I'm, and, and in my thighs and ass. Mm -hmm. And so the thigh and ass area, even though they were more shapely and, um, and curved, mm -hmm. they were smaller. Yeah. And that blew my mind because I was lifting big, heavy <laughs> weights. The size of your body. <laughs> Listen, I'll say this forever and I don't care. I don't care how dead this horse is I'm beating because people don't fucking listen. The size of your body is completely dictated by how many calories you eat. The condition of your body, the composition of it, there's other factors, many factors, the style of training, uh, you know, your lifestyle things, but how big or small your belly or your muscles doesn't matter. The size of your body is 100% dictated by how much calories is put in your mouth. Well, and I also want to add to that. I, I loathe calorie counting. It's just, sure. it's not for me. I don't, I don't enjoy it. It doesn't make me happy. It makes everything a pain in the ass. So I, I think it's, I think it's at times, I'm sorry. I think it's at times incredibly useful. And I think a lot of people, especially people who are coming from a world where they've just never paid any attention to how much they're eating or what they're eating. I do think at some point you should go through that. Do I think calorie counting is something that people should do forever at all? At, no way. No, no way. Because it is, it's, but, but it's it, kind of unhealthy and in I, the long run. And I understand like for people, somebody who A, wants to lose a lot of weight and B, may not really understand portion size mm -hmm. um, because we are inundated with, I mean, we go out to eat very seldomly, but especially here in Texas, like when we do, I'm so blown away by the portion sizes. It's like, that's, that's like a food for three people. Well, and, and frankly, that's America, period. It's America. Yeah. And everyone's always like, uh, you know, uh, well, Italians eat this and they look so, 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 so the Japanese, they eat plenty of soy and you should, soy is not bad. I go, yeah, listen, listen to me. Don't ever compare America. You know what? Here's another, if I will say, don't ever compare America. Okay. You want to compare another country? Mexico. For Thousands of years, Mexicans have been unbelievably trim and healthy. And in the last 40 years, they have gone back and forth as number one and number two of the fattest country mm. in the world behind good old U.S. of A. For one reason, one reason alone, Americanized food has inundated them. Fast food, hostess, convenient well, food has just taken because America, Mexicans for years have eaten fucking bimbo bread and, and, and bullshit food, but they were always eating that very infrequently with much different portion size. But also what are we, this, I can't remember the exact number. I'm going to get it wrong, but uh, maybe you can double check it. It's like, we're, we make up like 4% of the world population or something in the United States. We have, it's a huge country. And yeah. we are, and we are responsible for consuming 62% of the pharmaceuticals. So, like, what does that tell you about our health? And, um, and well, and, and, and also, by the way, like 80 percent of the narcotics. Right. And, uh, you know, and that's and I, again, I, yes, kind of off topic, but at the same thing, same time, it, it bears mentioning. Americans do all the drugs and we we fucking are crazy violent and we're crazy drug doers and we're crazy. Main, Americans are maniacs. There is a cultural component that I like to mention, 
because it's not like by virtue of being born in the USA, you're more violent or you're more prone to doing drugs. It's our lifestyle, our culture, our go, 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 the cowboy ethic that makes us great. That I am a huge, I'm a big, uh, uh, unashamed, proud American. I love this country. It is what makes the innovation in this country so great. The, 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 the accomplishment, the, our, our, our ambition is amazing. But we are so fucking conditioned to be type A that it also makes us crazy for other shit too, including this gluttonous attack of of eating you know well and and again it goes back to uh you know if you're someone like me who just cannot deal with counting calories i would say um at first it might be good just to kind of understand portion size and and how much but also just what i do is i really pay attention to what my body feels like and if we would slow the fuck down when we're eating and actually go like oh what is that feeling it turns out i'm full yeah. I'm full after way less than I thought I would be. And then you stop and you can put that food in the fridge and you can eat more of it later. And and I think that that's the thing is like Mike does the all of the cooking here at the house, which is um, <laughs> very wonderful. And I and I, I'm not trying to do it to be wonder wonder husband or anything. I, I enjoy it. He loves it. And, and so and because I, of that. You know, other things fall almost exclusively on Bianca. The, uh, it's, a good, it's a good balance. But I love to cook. So, but, you know. but, and, but so, you know, he and because he loves to cook and he's so happy about us eating the food he cooks is really brings him joy. A lot of times he gives us bigger portions than, than we need. True. And, um, and I've just learned to really pay attention and listen. And um, your body is like so awesome. It's such a it's such a gift and and it's so intelligent. And I I wish that we were taught from a young age how to listen to it because yeah. it really is dependable and you really can trust it. And you know what the beauty of that is, is that then you don't have to go to the experts and you don't have to rely on the gurus and the like you can be your own best uh, advocate. You really can, because when you align with your BFF and you just listen to the cues and everything going on, you'll be like, oh, my God, it's been here all along. And I just didn't listen because I because I didn't understand how. And it's not really complicated. You just listen to how you feel. Does this make me and same with people and 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 uh, and life experiences like where you feel lifted and free. Do more of that. And um you know, I think that's great advice. Listen to your body, especially when it comes to eating. And then we've talked about the fuel you're putting in your body. Yeah. You touched a little bit on the training, which I look at as how you, you know, to take your, to, if let's say you're a, you're a, a Honda Accord or a Toyota Camry, now, I'm, nothing, those are great automobiles, but they're, they're Mike like, loves his car. Right? You're a basic, you're a basic car. You're just a regular sedan that, you know, grocery getter. And um, that's your physique. You're not, uh, you know, you're not fat. You're not uh, this, you don't have serious health condition. But you want to look in the mirror and see a Ferrari. You want to look in the mirror and see a Porsche. You're not going to do it by acting like a Prius, by just trying to burn fuel and minimize the amount of fuel you put in and playing that game over and over oh. again. You have to revamp your engine. And that is what so many, I think mo a lot of women, uh, men too, but a lot of women misunderstand that training, these lifting of these heavy weights, these complex movements, you getting to the bottom of a squat and going again and again. This is what's reconditioning your metabolism to then have that lean, beautiful physique. It is not just to create bulky muscles. And um I, I, um, I, was there any, even when you made that transition, you started working with Janet and then now you're working with Paul Carter, who I got you in touch with. He's amazing and smart, you know, really th this in incredible mind who looks at things from a comprehensive standpoint. Also important to note a, a large giant muscular, muscular guy, yeah. guy. And that doesn't intimidate me anymore because I know that the way that I take care of my body, I can do the same exercises as him, but my fuel is different. Yeah. So I'm not, it's not a concern. And, and, um, you know, she, Bianca, uh, can I say, and I'm not saying this is the way you got to go, but can I say you do zero cardio? 
zero cardio. Literally, literally zero. Okay. <laughs> Do you see the slide? And she's, the, but, and and trains, if you were to just tr- watch her train, is training like a fucking animal in the gym doing, you know, slow negatives and, and complex barbell movements. and But for, but like my typical workout is, I mean, sometimes I'm out of there in 30 minutes. Sometimes it's 45, 50 minutes, but like, this is the thing. I think oh, the insanity to be doing the kind of workouts that I used to do and the cardio that I used to do and having better results, a better time at the gym because it's engaging my mind because I'm looking at it like, wow, this beautiful body and look at how each week I can lift more and I can do this better. And I'm, my form is getting, you know, uh, uh, streamlined and, and yet I am doing so much less in so many different ways than I was before. And I think that's the beauty of life is simplify it. Everything things simple is always better. Um, and, and it is more enjoyable. And now I have the energy to go out and, you know, I mean, I guess in a way, like my life, there's a lot of cardio in my life because I, we have a farm now and there's, I'm walking around and doing stuff like that. But are you saying another, another thing that you like to, besides heavy resistance training is to stay active day in and day out throughout the day? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if there's anyone in your life if, as a Mikey likes you listener, who's kind of promoted that. I'm just, just curious. Go ahead. Oh, you're so proud of yourself. <laughs> hey and i will point out that we, bianca and i do well i mean if we without trying we'll look down at our steps on our phone it's like fifteen thousand every day for me and you know I, I get it we are not um running a hedge fund or or, or a computer programmer or you know working at at, at, at budget rent a car whatever most people aren't, aren't living on a farm i get that Okay, I understand. I'm not trying to say like it's easy. It's e- yeah, it's easy for me because when I'm not lifting weights or doing a podcast, I'm building a fucking chicken hen or chicken coop. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, but it does bear that you're looking at the animal of Homo sapien. Okay, the animal of Homo sapien is not meant to eat rice cakes and cucumber sticks and then get on a treadmill and, and a stair climber. For, for for an hour and a half. My, oh, and, or, or to sit on your ass. And here's the thing. Like, even when I was back in Venice, um, I didn't have all the farm land and the farm work. So I was still getting out and walking. And like your body, and that's the, that's the beautiful thing. When you start to put proper fuel in and you start to engage it in um, things that challenge it and, and that challenge your, your mentality... Um, you don't want to sit on your butt. And even for people who work in an office, you can get those desks where your computer is, uh, you're standing and, and you can move while you're working. Our body doesn't even want if, to even sit And even if you so. can, even if you work at a company where like, that's not, that's not possible. Uh, yeah. You can, don't tell me you can't. In fact, your productivity will be better if you every hour, however long, I actually look, there's days where you have like a four hour board meeting or something. It's just not possible. But day in and day out, for you, you're lying to yourself if you say every 20 minutes to an hour you can't sit and go for a five, 10 minute walk. Uh, yes, you can take your calls on, you know, on your cell phone and walk around the block. You can walk wherever you are. I mean, that's something that's always available unless maybe you work on a freaking aircraft carrier. Um, even then, that's pr- probably no, that's a ter- terrible reference. Why? Because guys on an aircraft, guys and gals on an aircraft carrier could walk all the fucking time. Yeah, that's true. What would you be if you were if you are working a dinghy? If you're no, if, <laughs> if you're on a if you're on whatever a, a whatever. spaceship, but if you're flying to to Mars or to the International Space Station, no, they one Mars. they have a they have an exercise thing in there in, the, in, in there. the a rocket. I know they do oh, at, not, the, not, at the no, International not Space the Station. They have a but quite extensive. That long. But, right, go but, ahead. but the, thing, the that. thing that I want to say is that <laughs> along with the the everything we're talking about here today and, and along with the mental conditioning and, and the, the um, way that we've been raised since we were kids for whatever reason. And there are lots of theories about why this is, but we have been conditioned to think more about our limitations than we do about our capabilities. That's a fact. If you look at any watch TV for any length of time, you will see commercials that, that, go like when you can't do this or you can't, do, you know, it's, it's all about like 
why this sucks or why you can't do this or when you feel ugly and you want to spruce yourself up a little bit or whatever. It's all about the downside. And and so I think when you're paying attention to the way you think on a daily basis and you start to become aware of the negativity there, anything is possible. Like you could say, I work in this type of an environment and it's not possible for me. I'm telling you, it is. Your mind will find a way if you just say, I'm going to find the solution. I'm going to figure out a way that I can do this because there always is yeah. a way through, a way out, a way up. There, It's always there. And the the minute that you start to change your mentality to live in the solution and not in the problem, as our therapist always used to say, life changes in such unbelievably magical ways. Um, and it's all due to what's going on between your ears. Now, I, I mean, I, that's amazingly true and a beautiful point. And I, I'm not trying to to put your gun. Poop, poop. No, no, no. But I want to say, look, if you're a single mom working three jobs, uh, of course, looking like Bianca next month isn't re- and also, you know, becoming uh, Elon Musk, you know, yes. Is anything possible? Of course not. And you're listening to this and you're probably yes, like, it's yes. easy, easy for no, you no, to no, say stop, you're wealthy stop, stop, and stop, you don't have time. Stop, to stop, yeah. stop. We got to stop doing this. No, no. I, okay, got, wait, wait, we, hold no, on, no, hold but, on. But wait, really, let me finish. Yes. Let me finish. I'm not trying to poo-poo on your point. I know, I think, you, I know But what I am trying. saying is that I think far too many fitness, self-help, celebrity uh, voices on the internet try to give these incredibly beautiful sounding ideas. And it's like, okay, that probably is very insulting to a lot of people who I, listen, genuinely are just trying to fucking keep their head above water and not I, I understand, drive off I a understand cliff, that. You know? But this applies even in those scenarios as well, mm. which is that I, I'm I'm tired of people being told to be realistic and to and to accept where you're where you are and what your circumstances are. Because the fact of the matter is, mm. is that you and I both have been in really dark hopeless holes sure, in our sure, life. Sure, sure, sure. And so is life challenging and can life be very difficult? Absolutely. Can you be in a situation where it's really annoying to hear people talk about what's possible and, and, and living in the solution when you're at a place where you are, like you said, just trying to tread water? Yes, I understand how devastating that can be when you don't know how. But what I'm saying is there is always a way through. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not saying that tomorrow you should be like us or or anyone else that you, you know, look to and go like, wow, I'd love to live my life in that way. But what I am saying is that you can start today by changing the way you think about things. Mm-hmm. And anything is possible. Sure. A hundred percent. I again I I think that is beautiful. And I totally agree with you. What I, all I was pointing out is that, um, I, I'm not trying to say, except, no, except, I, no, hold can, on, hold on. I, no, but, except your life for what it is. I'm not saying that there's it just the whole take life on its own terms and every, and you know, don't give up hope is it by no means what I was trying to say. All I was trying to point out is that Bianca isn't one of those people who's trying to say to, to you, the guy who just lost his job at a coal mine in West Virginia, uh, or, or the like I said, the single mom with three kids and and four jobs just to get to, to get by. That hey, you could do it. I did it. It's a what 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 you but are I, saying. What you I are know, saying. But I is, understand. But I don't. I don't need those disclaimers made for me. Okay. okay? Because the fact of the matter is, is that I know I'm a single mom with four kids, and she works like a dog. And she's up at five in the morning she is. lifting weights she's in her garage. That's true. So the thing is, I know is that it, it, we have to have tough love. And if it offends you that somebody in a different position than you is saying something that you go, well, like where I'm at, that's just not possible. I think that that person needs to look inside of themselves. And, and because you're telling yourself it's not possible. I'm not saying anything that should be offensive or should in any way trigger something within you if it does that's a look inside because you will 1000 percent of the time be able to find someone who is if not in your same position worse in a worse situation who is doing these things 
and more. It's all about mental attitude. It's all about, about can do. Yes, I get that that is a very hard and challenging leap to make when it's not the way that you've thought about your life from the get-go. But I'm telling you, who we came into this world to be is not the person you are now. And when you look at people, those of you who have kids, look at your children. Look at how there is no fear. Look at how they have no questions about who they are, at least in the very beginning. We screw them up ourselves be with our own fears and our own judgments. We do that to them. Yeah. And, and it was done to us. But I'm telling you that it, you have to accept. Well, you don't have to accept anything. You can do however you want. <laughs> but if you want to change, you do have to accept tough love. You do have to understand that there, are, there can be no more excuses. And we could all find excuses to make every single one of us. And it's all relative because the people that you look at that you think like, wow, that person really has it all. They don't. They're beating themselves up inside just as much as you are. So the surroundings may look different. The bank account may look different, but inside it's all the same. Absolutely. It's beautiful. Thank you. And uh, yeah, you changed my mind a little bit. I did? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I guess through marrying you and, and, and getting to know you, I have gotten to something that I, outside of professional life, never really had, uh, where I got to see people of extreme wealth and fame uh, behind. And a lot of times I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. No. It's, it's all fucked up. Um, not, not all the time. I, I've seen some people where I was like, oh, that guy's got it figured out. Um, but either way, in closing, because I now we've gone twice as long as I it's promised you when we go. Um, I want you to promote your website. Oh, that's nice it, of you. Because it's beautiful. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I started a website. It's still kind of figuring out what it is going to be, but it's called um, All Welcome Here. It's allwelcomehere.com. And it's a collection of my thoughts and writings. But my hope is for it to eventually evolve into a place where everyone can share their thoughts and feelings. But I, ju I just wanted to have a place where um, we could support each other and uh, and be authentically who we are. And, you know, I think that this is an important step to really, um, you know, aligning with every everything, all, all your true potential um, is that to, to really uh, to be able to express yourself. And um, I think that there is a lot of stuff going on in the world that makes it very easy to feel like everything's falling apart. And the fact of the matter is, is that no matter where you are, there is still a breathtaking sky above you and a green, gorgeous earth below you. And that really, at the end of the day, is all that matters, uh, is the beauty around us because we're only here for a short while. Boom, bitch. In your face. <laughs> uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, Allwelcomehere.com. Allwelcomehere.com. Yeah. And uh, at Mikey Likes You, at Mikey... Or excuse me, at Mike Catherwood, at Mikey Likes You One, the number one on my socials. She is at Miss Kylik, M I S S, um, K A J L I C H, because that's a fucking tongue twister. Um, and then also, if you're interested in more uh, detailed and focused help, uh, my Patreon offers all different levels of said help. Um, and I am Mike Catherwood on Patreon. And also, head on over to the YouTube channel. If you haven't already, because there is a lot more that goes along with this podcast, a lot of like exercise demos. There's a lot of videos of my cousin Rudy uh, making fun of me. There's uh, good stuff. Good stuff. there. And train with him yeah. if you can. He's so amazing. And he's on the phone and on the computer all the time corresponding with his top tier Patreon clients. And I'm so proud of him and that if you've seen any of the transformations, they're pretty incredible. So if you feel like it's really difficult and you don't really know where to begin, um, He's so good at it. Thanks, honey. Love you. Love you. Love you.